This is episode 63 of the 100 podcast. I brought in Jesse from Heighton Palm Springs. Uh, we're not on the infamous red couch today. We're actually at the dispensary. Uh, I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to have you on. Uh, you're the first dispensary I've had on, so thanks, man. Oh, I appreciate it. We're honored and, and I guess privileged to have this opportunity. Um, um, like I said, uh, anything we could do to kind of uh, give the public a little bit of insight of what we do and how we do things. I know the industry itself has a huge stigma behind it, uh, more so here in California because of how rampant the black market is. So any opportunity we have to kind of showcase who we are, any platform you give me um, is a great opportunity so we can kind of showcase who we do, who we are, what we do, and, and, and uh, hopefully give those that are maybe a little hesitant in trying something uh, for any kind of elements, more so for those that are looking for medicinal yeah, uh, relief. Yeah, yeah. This is a way for us to kind of bridge that gap and kind of, you know, uh, um, bring something old into the new era, you know, that's that's been around for quite yeah. a bit of time, you know. Yeah, kind of bring it from the, uh, like, the illegal, they thought, yep. it, you know, the drug to the actual medicine it is. Exactly. Yeah, and... Uh, and I saw, like you said, like you're trying to show the community like what you're doing. I saw you guys have already worked with Flat Black. Like, how'd you guys even come in contact with uh, Flat Black, with Pete from Flat Black Shop in Palm Desert? Yeah, so, even... so, so lucky for me, uh, our, our social media, our, our communication liaison is, is not only a local, but he's, he's tied into a lot of, uh, of organizations. He does a lot of uh, work with the community. So thankfully, thankfully for that, uh, we were able to kind of get in touch with some of the locals. I'm not from the Valley. I'm from Orange, Orange County. Um, but the idea of coming here to the Valley and Palm Springs, of, of, of all places, is to, um, is to be here but be part of the community. So when I reached out for talent uh, and, and really staff up this place, um, it was all about bringing in locals because those locals bring uh, with them a piece of the community. And luckily for me, I found uh, our, our liaison officer, who's Jonathan Becerra, and he's well connected in the community. And through his connections, we were able to kind of tie in. Um, I, I guess he kind of expedited the, the, the relationship and kind of uh, helped us blossom into the community a lot quicker than I, I had planned. Yeah. So we were lucky to find him, you know. So through his connections, we were able to bring some local artists, um, you know, and so we're trying to bridge those gaps, not only with the consumer but also making uh strong ties with the community itself so yeah. that we can have that you know that that mutual benefit you a know? connection absolutely yeah because yeah. because you guys i don't even know how long you've been open but it's been for a very short time and it's been during the pandemic and i'm surprised how how much you guys have have spread already you know like they're 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 in palm desert and and a lot of dispensaries from even that area haven't spread out and 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 got into the community as quick as you guys have so so i i I appreciate it. Did you run a dispensary when you were in Orange County? Um, well, you know, back in the two fifteen days, you know, there was a lot of gray area. So I've ran dispensaries. I've ran a couple of delivery services in the in the OC. Um, and, you know, you learn the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, and you take it yeah. in strides. And so coming out here, um, not to say that, you know, I have a, a working formula, but um, I've learned one thing in this industry, you know, being righteous, being, being upfront, being honest um, may not be uh, uh, the, the, the way that many of, of folks that come from the 215 days did it, but it is a, 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 the right way to do it. Uh, and so coming here, I, I knew I had to set the foundation down and had to be a strong one. So coming here with principles, about you know longevity of business and this is actually you know becoming more legitimate as the day goes by uh -huh. and so you got to think that way you know so luckily for us um coming down here to palm springs we chose a place where we could kind of uh, uh you know uh, set our roots down and and really showcase uh the other side of this industry that that's that's been kind of shaded for for many years so uh it's it's just been working for us you know what, what were some of the reasons you chose this valley so um, right off the bat, it's, it's you know, I, I try to stay away from big cities. You know, I've worked in Los Angeles, uh, you know, the Long Beach area, uh, the OC San Diego. So um, you get to deal with, 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 with uh, a different type of dynamics in the industry. Um, and you're having to really get involved in hype and things that not necessarily align with my ideals. Um, I was a cultivator and extractor, so my grassroots are, are, are extremely uh, different than those that are trying to just capitalize on the market. You're not business, industry. you're all the way all deep the way, in, yeah, the man, back it's, end it's, of it. It's about having a, a mutual respect, you know, like I said, I'm, 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 
you know, you got to pay your dues. And in, in part of that, you have to give homage to those that sit this, you know, the, the road for this. So coming to the Valley, it's a place where it's a little more, more, more laid back, but the people, the culture is, uh, is, is deep rooted into, into the weed, you know, uh, into the marijuana industry. And it's a different type of dynamics. You know, it is business. At the end of the day, we all have to yeah. make money and, you yeah, know, yeah. make ends meet, but it's, uh, uh, I'd say you're in touch with your inner self a lot better, a lot closer here in the Valley. Um, and so for someone like me, who's righteous and always been all about, you know, treating people with, with dignity and respect, it fits with my, my, my values, opposed to trying to, you know, you know, run a side to side with the hype in LA. Yeah. Long not, not to say that those shops are any less important. It's just that, um, you're competing for something different than if you're out here at the valley, you know. You almost got to like put on a show. And you do, it's man. Like it's about the quality or about how you treat people. Exactly. It's, everybody knows everybody, so yep. everybody kind of knows. Oh, this guy, you know, took care of me when I was at the shop yeah, or whatever. So it's a it's a more family oriented feeling uh, of community of giving back, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it really when you give back to community like uh, any city here in the valley um, it's it's well received and there's a mutual benefit opposed to going to a bigger larger city where you have to deal with more politics and red tape and stuff like that so um, giving back really feels as if you're doing it uh, and it, it, it just feels good you know do you, do you feel like uh, since you guys have moved here that you've been accepted into the the Coachella Valley community yeah quickly? I mean I mean um, I will tell you um, if, if you sat outside our store and just simply talked to our customers um, you can see a different type of vibe, you yeah. know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of shops here in the Valley. There's a lot of shops here in Palm Springs of all places, but I can tell you what, I, I didn't come here to open up another shop. I came here to, to really showcase my ideals and change the industry, you know, especially the retail game, you know, yeah. because you go from trap shops back in the day, it's all about making that, that dollar last, you know, and um, you'll see that it's funny because you'll see the new and the old here in Palm Springs and the newer shops are opening up. They're coming here with a different ideology, you know, uh, the ideology is that good customer service, good quality product at, 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 a, at a good price will always outdo anything else, you know? Mm, so yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're going back to what I was saying, if you, if you sat here and you talk to every customer that comes in here, most of our business here is, is based on repeating customers. You know, when back in the day, it was always about that first time, first time patient deal or courting effect, you know, yes. here, all our, all our uh, regulars are regulars, you know, and we're, we're, we're slowly growing, but it's a solid, great feeling of growth because it's the people that are part of the community that are actually pushing forward our growth and because of COVID-19 we can't it's it's a very delineated line it's not like we're confusing tourism because there is no tourism so yes. all our business is locals and when you see the same faces over and over and over it's the most beautiful thing because you get to realize your shop is something else than just a place where they could get medicine. It's a shop they could come, enjoy, and take advantage of everything we offer. So when you see that on customers' faces and you get to talk to them, I, I spend most of my day talking to customers throughout the day. And I tell you what, I, I get to have a bad encounter. And you could feel uh, that, you know. I'm a genuine person, so I love genuine answers. So it's a great feeling to have. Uh, and so going back to your question, we've been embraced and, and I think accepted. And beyond that, uh, uh, it's a great feeling, you know. Yeah, well, I feel embraced from, you know, the front desk to the security guard to, to, you know, everybody that works here. It's like you guys aren't trying to get the first customer. You're trying to get a returning customer. You're yeah, trying to I, get somebody back multiple times. Absolutely. Not just that first time. You know, it doesn't, it, you know, when you walk in here, it's not about, you know, the, 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 the dollar you lay on that on that counter, you know. It's all about getting to know you first, you know. Um, and, you know, it's if you could get to the customer in a different way where you're not looking at them as, as, as you know, your money making, you know, um, um, or, or your cash cow, if you, if you will. Um, I think you start off the relationship there, and I think they feel that, you know. It's, it's, it's almost as if, you know, it's familiar, in, and it's something that they can come, you know, they, they, they could rely on us to provide them with, with honest reviews and honest feedback of the, about the, each product, yeah. you know. And it goes, that, that goes along with also our brands that we represent here, you know. We typically like to li align ourselves with brands that are, have the same beliefs and morals, you know, uh, because that way there is a, a true mutual benefit in them trying to sell in here and us really trying to push them, you know. It's, it's not about how much money we can make it off of them, you know. We keep it consistent, and if you ever, you know, uh, go into other shops, sometimes you feel as if, though, you know, they're, they're just trying to sell 
the things that makes them the most money yes. and not what's yeah. best for the customer, you know? And I hate that feeling. Me being, you know, I've gone into thousands of shops, you know? Um, and it's that feeling of, I'm just another number. Yeah, they're just know? trying to sell you the, the highest priced item, yep. you know? And it's like... And it's no, and, 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 it's, and the industry, again, it's a medicine at the end of the day. Whether you, whether you take this as a recreational drug or a medicinal drug, at the end of the day, there's medicinal properties. I don't care how you look at it, you know? So that product you're giving to that person carries with it a medicinal benefit. And although their name, your, your, your customer may not be looking at it that way, you're still providing a medicinal uh, outlet for that person to use. So no matter how you look at it, it's not about the dollar, you know. We, we make money in this industry, but it's not what it's all about. You still want to give them the highest quality product Absolutely. no matter what. Every, yeah. yep. Every single time, man. Yeah, Every single time. You don't want to give them trash because it's still going in their body. They're yep. still intaking it. Yeah. Yeah, what what are, is making your dispensary different than the ones in the valley? Like, how are you guys trying to, uh, you know, show everyone that you guys are this and everybody's kind of here? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I would, know you support I, everybody <laughs> in the valley. I know, no hate, no hate. I, I want to say up everybody. here, down no, here, yeah, so, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, there's you are there's, heightened dispensary. Um, you know, okay. you're up there. You know? <laughs> just so, kidding, just so what we're what we're doing is to heighten the senses. Is is really what we're doing is, you know, I don't think if I don't think it's it's, it's something you know you know so out let feel that it's so different but what it is is we came here with a different idea the idea was to give uh, customers what what they've been asking for for many years out of this industry you know I want quality product you know uh, that's not you know uh, uh, filled with with chemicals and pesticides and we want it for a decent price you know because that's really what it's all about so that's the we started with that idea and that idea grew into what we, if we if we build a if we build a company a retail shop around that idea, it all boils down to customer service, right? Yeah. And that customer service is not only about the customer, but it also uh, ties into the community because that customer is most likely belongs it, they most likely belong to the community, yeah, you know. Right now, so yeah. if we built a retail shop that where where we could promote quality products, fight for the customer to get the best price, and not not just fight for the best price because we can negotiate the price so that we can make more profits but, but to really convey that profit to the customer so it doesn't stop there though the next stop the next step is providing also the a great experience with that you can't claim to be one thing and then come in and showcase that something different so with that qual so with a variety of quality products at the best price possible. I see you guys always running always, discounts. Always, always bro. And, and, and that's to offset taxes and other things. But I, I challenge anybody to look at our weed maps or Leafly or any menu. And I promise you, 9 out of 10 times, man, we're, we're, we're the lowest base price out there. Now, taxes, unfortunately, Uncle Sam, I have no hold and control over yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we go into discounts and deals because we want to make sure that you get the most out of your dollar, you know. So our idea coming here was quality product, bringing the best quality product we could, we could find, negotiate the price, not for our benefit, but for the customer so that we could give the best price possible. And third, uh, and as important is that, be part of the community. Don't come here and try to make money off the people because guess what? Those people are the ones that feed you. Yeah, so yeah, coming yeah, here yeah. with an outside mentality just to come make money and then sell or move out, that was the old days. I'm here to exactly. stay. I want to retire. I want to be here for 20, 30 years. If I can franchise, franchise to the next city, to the next town, whatever the case may be, I didn't come here to make a quick dollar and leave. You want to make you a know? foundation. You want Absolutely. to build here and stay here. Absolutely. Yeah. And how are you, how, what are you doing to build into the community? Because I know you did the, the art piece with Flat Black and, yeah. and what, what other uh, events or, or, or things so, you guys have planned in the future? So uh, we also recently uh, uh, videotaped, uh, uh, um, uh, we, we had a, um, I guess we would call it a, not a live, but a, we had an interview with, uh, with uh, Diana, who, who belonged with the greater uh, Coachella Valley the, the oh. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We, had, we had an interview with them. That was really our first step in really introducing who we, who we are, what we do kind of deal. In addition to that, uh, we did work with Flat Black, and they have amazing uh, 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 events planned for the future. Um, we immediately brought in a, a, a local artist, Adam, um, and, and I don't know if you've saw you've seen our, our, our reception, but that Maybe. entire mule was painted by a local artist, oh, you know. Really? And so, in addition to that, we have events and and um, uh, on our calendar, actually, if you go on our calendar, we have events planned so that we could bring in you know parts of the community in here. I think education is a big part of that. Is giving the community a, a a platform so they could get educated on not only the products that we sell, but how to administer different ways of this you know of this medicine. You know, it's it's funny because you know a lot of uh, especially here in Palm Springs, we have a uh, a, a, a huge senior community, and many of them are, are either are 
you know, you said back in the 60s, 70s, the doobie, the joints, you know, and they're probably looking at all the new stuff coming out. And they're like, wow, what is all this new stuff? And they're reluctant to try something. And then you got those that are coming back to be users, you know. Why? Because they may have, they may have not wanted to do it for, you know, you know, legal reasons or whatever the case may be. So providing a platform so for that these folks to come in here and learn about not only what's, how, how much this industry has grown, but to get educated on how it works with your body, how, the different ways of administrating it, that makes a huge difference. You know, there's people that come in here looking just for that high, and that's fine, but there's also people looking for that relief and pain and anxiety. Yeah. And, you know, again, we don't claim to be doctors, but we know based off research that this medicine helps with, the, with many conditions. So if we could provide a little bit more knowledge to that person who's hesitant to try it, and we could just, just give them enough information that they, they could go ahead and just try it, we could change somebody's life for the rest of their life. But that goes both sides. That goes both ways, you know? We could also ruin somebody's first experience. And hence why... Yes, I get what you're saying. So yeah. hence why the, the, the emphasis, the, 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 we emphasize on the education very hard here because of that reason. Because we could, be, we could, we could help somebody fix something for the rest of their lives, but we, we, but, but we could all also deter somebody from trying it. So we really, uh, not myself, but my entire staff, we we train and we try to be as, as educated as we can and we rely on brands to showcase that but on our off time we research it's research 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 because um people look up to us to kind of provide them the right tool for the right job what brands or products are your i guess highest medicinal or the you know feel like like they have the highest medicinal so, properties so right off the bat say. there's categories right and it, from each category you may have like a flower or an edible or, or a concentrate but the cbd realm you know yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. our system our, our endocannabinoid system have receptors you know and that's you know it's funny because that's endocannabinoid cannabis it's the it's the only known drug on a molecular level to really attach to our nervous system you know and every 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 type of uh, profile you may have in a CBD plant. For instance, we hear CBD because it's the most popular, the most common, but you got CBN, CBG, all these, all these cannabinoids attached to our endocannabinoid system in, in all sorts of ways, you know? And so the research is out there. When it comes to the, 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 the highest uh, um, uh, So those relief, will have medicinal properties too? CBM or CBG or yep. what? Really? So yeah, all of them. So, so we, we, those receptors uh, get, get bombarded with um, with all these cannabinoids and based on at what level you're you're es essentially curing not curing but you're really treating some kind of element and our body tells us exactly what's wrong with it and we find the, the thing that may, may may provide some kind of relief so in the realm of cannabis anything that's in the in the CBD in, C, in, in heavy heavy on the CBD side and we're talking about any cannabinoid receptor is usually what you're going to look for because in addition to that it has no THC yeah. Or, or, or you're having a one-to-one -one ratios, which if, if a lot of people don't know this, but CBD products don't get you high. That psychoactive effect that you have comes strictly from a THC part of the plant. That THC uh, part of the plant can be, can be doled down with CBD. So many, many, many people Why don't do know people this. people still have that fear of CBD like that? Because I feel like even like my, my dad, he has some, some, some well, because, like ailments and he's like, I won't try it. You know? Well, because like, really? again, we, we have this stigma, you know, so many, for so many years, you know, not, not to mention, you know, um, back in the day, you know, you were lucky to get 8%, 10% THC in a, out of a plant. Yes. You, yeah. we're, we're seeing plants that are hitting 30, 30. I, we have a, we have a, a, a Mojave uh, strain here that's 33% and 37 total cannabinoids. So nothing's ever been done in research-wise until recently about the cannabinoids, about the CBD side of the plant. Uh -huh. And so, you know, you go, you know, imagine somebody being told 20 years something, the same thing over and over and over and trying to click that switch over and say, hey, by the way, it doesn't work that way. Try this. Don't be fearful. You can't do that so easily. Yeah. So, again, we go back to retail shops being responsible because retail shops are at the front at the front of this industry. They're boots on ground. I call them boots on ground because in the military, that's what you call them, boots on ground. You're, you're the guy at the front, front, lines. front lines, baby. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's our responsibility to kind of break that stigma. And and I will shade any retail shop that doesn't provide that to their customers. When you walk in here, it's not about the THC. Oh, give me the t highest THC. No. 
there's 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 lower you know testing plants uh, and strains that would have a better effect on your body than a higher THC but you can't convince somebody otherwise why because for, for 20 30 40 years however long these plants have been available to people everybody's concentrating on the THC levels yeah not knowing that there's so much more other benefits so going back to your to your your, your dad your grandfather Try and break, trying to break that stigma is going to be extremely hard, but it's possible. And so retail shops are responsible for that. You know, when, when people come in here and they come in here with the most faint idea of what the plant does to them, you know, because we have people that come in here and the first thing they tell you is like, I want the highest testing THC plant. And I said, come here, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me educate you, you real yeah, quick, you know, yeah. and it's a learning opportunity. And you got customers that will just wave you off and they don't care, you know, and that's okay. But it's our job to at least offer that opportunity to showcase, to educate. And so, so I tell anybody out there that's hesitant to try a CBD uh, a product to, to not, 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 not to be hesitant. CBD does not get you high. Yeah, there is no all, psychoactive yeah. effect whatsoever. And I'll give you even a tip on that. For those people that do get super high and excessively high, guess what counters that? You, you, you eat something, you drink something, you smoke something with CBD, and it helps you get, you, get down from that high. Really? It, it's the I've only, never heard of that. It's the only proven way to really kill a, a, a just an outrageous high. Just you, counteract it. Yeah. It's, it's, it, matter of fact, it's exactly what that is. It's a counter. It's, it's a way to counter a THC high. It's oh. CBD. It's a yin and yang. They're two different, they're two different properties, and one counsels out the other. So, m that's many a lot of people don't know that, but that's yeah. that's how it works, man. Never heard of that. How long have you been in the industry? So this would be going on my ninth year, man. You know, uh, okay. I was in the military up to that point. I was a police officer. I'm like, really? I'm like at the opposite of the spectrum, you know. And I'll tell you the secret about me. I don't even consume. I know. That's I what don't. Telling you like, know, I don't. I don't smoke. Not because I don't think it's bad. It's just you know, I do have PTSD and stuff like that. So I'll give you. I'll share something personal. You know, but I was in the military for for ten years. Got out. Uh, in the military, I was a cop. So I was like to completely on the opposite side of this industry. You know. So when I got out, though, the funny part about that is that it was a combination of two things. In in my in my civilian uh, side, I was working private security, doing a, a private security stuff, and at the same time, my father was suffering with kidney disease. You know, and because he was on so many meds. And so at that time, eight years ago, Rick Simpson oil was huge. CBD was barely getting into the industry, but I was very, I was intrigued and captivated by the medicinal part of it. And at the same time, I was also captivated by the business side because yeah. at the same time, not only was I working security, private security, but I was working for, for, for these companies that were growing and it, it caught my eye, and I saw an opportunity to get into this industry because it was lucrative and it was interesting. And on the flip side, my father at the time was, you know, uh, uh, taking all these meds, which kind of pushed him in having kidney disease. And I wanted to try something, probably to get, wean him off some of these meds. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we know that that that, that the pharmaceutical. It's you know, not good. Yeah, it's not, not good, good man. All, yeah. So I started growing some CBD plants, and and you know, one thing led to the other. And believe it or not, I was good at growing. And so I got into growing, and then I was I got good into you know extracting. So I've done everything in this industry, and it's going on nine nine years now, and it's almost been like you know it was yesterday, but um, but I've I've. I've loved every piece of, of, of this industry in different ways because I've done it all. But what really captivated me is the culture, the people, you know. Um, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a very, I'm a control freak. So you're talking to somebody that couldn't sit down with somebody who was high without losing his mind. But, you know, life is, a, is all about learning yeah, and experiences. Yeah. So You've gone full circle. Absolutely, like, man. man. So I could sit down and I could, I could talk with the, with, with the highest guy in the world, man, and it, 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 whether he's a toker or not, and still have a conversation that's decent. You know why? Because shrit bones, we're all human. And if there's anything that we does for you is that yeah. it puts you in a good state of mind for you to be who you are and, and, and not, not be a fake person. And, and one thing about me is, you know, combat makes you uh, really, really value life differently. So although I don't get high, I love sitting with people that are high because you get this, you get, you get the truth. You get, you get that person for who they are. And that to me, I respect that. And that's how I live my life. I don't hold my tongue for nobody, you know, um, and, and nobody should, you know, as long as you're being cordial and respectful and you have some kind of decency, you should be able to speak your mind freely be honest, and be yeah. who you are. And we, I know one thing in this culture is that we get you to that point a lot quicker than if you would rely on something else, you know, so perhaps that's what's really, really have, have give, has given me that opportunity and that feeling of, of being part of something much bigger.
you know, because when you're with people that are really truthful, it makes a whole difference. You yeah, know? It makes, were you it makes a big difference? Were you ever scared when you're tra- making that transition from being a cop, being on like <laughs> almost the whole other opposite side? You know, like well, to being. Uh, the, I was. I will tell you this. Uh, when I first transitioned over, you know, it's it was a complete new industry. You know, and and if, if someone had told me that I would be rubbing elbows with 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 the people that I was arresting back in the day. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> saying, man. Because like, this, is, this industry, as wholesome as it, as it is, it still came from a black market mentality. You yeah, know? yeah. And there's still, so when I crossed over, it wasn't necessarily I was fearful whether or not I was going to be successful or, or what I was getting myself into. I, I've, caught, I've always kind of been a, a, a headstrong kind of guy. What, what did kind of give me, you know, uh, a, a little anxiety was the legality of it. You know, because we, 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 when I came into this industry, there was such a huge gray area yeah, and, man. and there was no guarantee whether or not you were on the legal side, the legal side, because it all blurred together yeah, yeah, and yeah. being a cop and being a guy that's always been by the book kind of guy, um, that kind of gave me a little anxiety, whether or not what was, was I doing things the right way? And, it's, and it wasn't like you could go and, and, and hire a lawyer. Lawyers were learning it as, as fast as I was. They didn't really it. know no. what was going on And either. the state yeah. wasn't sure. And if you notice, you know, they, the state was going through changes. They didn't know what they were doing. We, we as an industry guys, didn't know what we were doing. The cops didn't know what they were doing because who do we arrest? Is this guy legal? Everybody was going through all these changes. My, my biggest anxiety or fear, if you want to call it fear, was not knowing if I was doing it legit, you know, in a legit way, mm. if I was getting in trouble. And my things like, you know, you know, it's almost as if you don't want to be always constantly looking, you know, over your shoulder. But that was the yeah. feeling, you know. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't doing anything wrong. But the gray area was so vast and big. You were like, you don't really know everything. You don't Do you know everything. Yeah. Yeah. So how close are you to the legal or how close are you to being illegal? And it was a matter of just just putting your best foot forward because everybody start, everybody that started with me was starting at the st- at the same starting line so it's not like anybody had any more than knowledge or, 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 or experience because outside of the black market I was around when it became legal so we all start I started with everybody else so it's not like Brand who do I new. look up to so if so going back to fear and anxiety that was it you know it's like not ma- making sure that I was doing things right because I didn't want to get blacklisted or, or get in trouble because I figured I want to stay in this business because I fell in love with it right off the bat and I said I don't want to do anything to ruin that to tar my, my name where I couldn't practice this later so I was very yeah, yeah, yeah. very conservative in how I did things you know um, and again um, I've never looked back and regretted anything. You know, I left the security side of things and I kind of, you know, in, you know, kind of just jumped into this and I've, I've, I don't have any regrets. You know, I love it. And, and like I said, although I don't partake into the festivities of smoking, um, <laughs> I, I love the culture and, and being a part of it, man. Yeah, how do you feel? Do you feel like there's a, a big gray area now, or do you think it's kind of... No, I, I think it's kind of... No, I, I, think, I think it's black and white. The problem with that is that it's, it's just a rocky... Uh, a road, you know, and the reason why is because now that we know what's legal and what's not, what's not uh, legal, uh, there's still that. Well, we got to run this as a business. So now we're running into issues where back in the day you didn't know if what was what was black, white, and gray. Now we're running into the issues is who supervises, who regulates, how many tax, how much tax do we pay? So now you're running into the uh, issues of, of yeah, a yeah. new formly. You know, this, is, this is a new form business. So now you're running into. What agencies regulate what? How much money and who do we pay? So now it's the growing pains of running a legal business. And you got to remember, on a federal level, it's still a Schedule One drug. So yeah. banking <laughs> is an issue. So now how do you – It's a. It's, this is a cash money kind of industry, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're running into into other issues, but not so much in, 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 in whether or not it's legal or not. Now it's a matter of how do we get cash flow into businesses? How do we – put our money into savings uh who do we report to how often so how do we track and trace because it's still a schedule one drug on the federal level so it just causes more issues you know yeah, yeah, and you yeah. know and i think it's going to be a matter of years and years uh and i don't think we'll ever get it right uh, here soon i think it's going to take some time just like colorado canada is a good example you know they're they're way more advanced in, in the sense that they've regulated it they've had government come in and they're you know i've always looked at canada you know about maybe you know a few years ahead of the game Mm -hmm. when it comes to regulations so we're at that stage where yes we know it's legal it's obviously known you know everybody knows it's legal but now we're running into those issues like okay so that road stays rocky do you feel until (laughs) it's federally legal until it's like all right it's out of the whole schedule one like we all just 
I think every state is legal. Is that what it's you like? Are, I, I, think, I think we're all wanting it. Uh, or not wanting it. I should say not wanting. I think everybody knows that it's going to eventually come to that point where the federal government is going to want to you know, put their two cents into it and yeah. control it. Um, I think from an industry standpoint, I, I, don't, I hope it, does, it doesn't happen. I hope they, they trust business owners, private companies, uh, people who, 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 who are probably mom and pop shops. To you really would rather the state because do you feel like the federal government would take more out of it? Think I think so. Kind of, could take their cut too, so then it's like almost taking Yeah, I know. Is I mean, too expensive almost? I, I think what, like I said, coming from the government myself and being a, a soldier and, and kind of knowing how the government works, um, I think I think they would they would they would really limit the the, the ability for people to really uh, consume or 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 just availability of the medicine, and I think they would put so many restrictions and controls over it that that um, uh, it, 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 again it it would take away from from an opportunity for for business owners, especially the states, to really control uh, a great amount of money taxes. And to yeah. really improve on a local level, and once it goes federally, you know, it gets blanketed all across the, sta- you know, the, the you're not seeing any state. of that. Nothing. You know, yeah. yeah, and you don't, you don't have, you don't have the flexibility that you do have, uh, we have now. You got to remember, California grows the best weed, not because we're in California, because of the climate, you know, opposed to Texas, you know. So putting the same regulations across the board, like a blanket system, you know, you're taking away the opportunity for maybe where Texas needs, you know, a local ordinance opposed to a federal ordinance, you know. Mm-hmm. And those are the concerns. Not to mention taxes and you know control over over a medicine that should be available you know to everybody you know yeah yeah it's pretty much a free plant out there yeah, you know? it shouldn't so. be the government shouldn't control everything you, you know? know you're you're allowed to grow chilies in the backyard why can't you grow you know a little pot plant you know yeah. i mean the difference is that you know it's schedule one opposed to you know just being open for anybody to use you know so i think i think i think the federal government's going to eventually kick in but i think we got some time and i'm hoping that that time allows us to show them that that local uh, is the way to go. How has it? How I haven't looked too deep into, but how has it looked with the the states? I, I've I've heard Colorado has handled. I think it's handled it pretty well. They said since it's like been fully legal and everything. Like, do do you think the states are handling it, handling it pretty well so far? Yeah, I think governing I think, themselves. You know, I think so. Um, governing themselves. I think overall they do a great job doing it. You know, but just like anything else, every state has their own dynamics. It's political. You know, every state we could say we could blame the federal government for for politics, but what do you think uh, local government is? It's a smaller slice of that of that yeah. pie. You know, so I think it all depends on on really what's what's what state you're looking into. Some states are more conservative, some are more liberal. So it all it it all and that's the problem. It all comes down to to politics, you know. I wish it was it just you know, if if the federal government could do one thing for this industry is is one is to open it up where they're not putting so many restrictions where states have to look at, at them for the regulations. They should be able to say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna allow this plant first off, taking it off schedule one, psh, does miracles. How, how would it even? How is it even still on schedule one? That's what just well, me out. You know, it's like we won't get into the history of the plant because I think that's another podcast entirely. I, I heard. A, I think I heard a little bit about that. And, I, I listen and, to Joe Rogan a lot. Okay, he talks and, about and it. And I don't want to. I don't want to uh, uh, look. You know, if we do this, I, I, I'm gonna have to you know mask my voice and stuff so I don't get you know. Uh, uh, I, I don't get you know black bagged and gotcha, taken away gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. In, in, a, in a black van and stuff. So oh, yeah, yeah. maybe maybe another conversation at a later date. Yeah, you know, yeah. and maybe when you know I look different. You know, I get some <laughs> co- you know cosmetic <laughs> surgery. We could. We okay. Have that, we you don't want the government discussion. to take you away, <laughs> yeah, you know. the Clintons to get rid you know, of you, or something. Exactly. So <laughs> as far as as far as it being on Schedule One, um, there's many theories and there's reasons. You know, I've always been a man of evidence and facts and things that make sense. And like I said, if you if you study the history about this plant, you know, it has a lot to do with uh, curtailing the times in that era yeah, in yeah. a certain way uh, to benefit certain political parties. You know, and you, it stayed that way. It didn't, didn't, I don't know exactly, I, I heard this, but wasn't it, didn't it basically get made illegal because cotton, they didn't want hemp to take the cotton industry? So, no, okay, so you're going way back. Way, know? way I thought back. We're, I thought we were talking about seven years oh, ago, but, but no, about, going way back, yeah, so. That's like the beginning, beginning but, yeah, right? Yeah, people, people are, are being aware, they're aware now, but the hemp plant is the most diverse, probably, plant out there. Yeah. You can make almost anything out of hemp, you know? And I think the idea was, you know, dur- during uh, those times, you know, slavery was huge. It, it was a big, many people don't know this, but it was a big money producer. It's a big, it, it was a business at, at the end of the day, you know? Uh, it, it, you know, it, you know it's, it, there's, it carries a lot of stigmas. But one of those things was um, 
replacing cotton fields with hemp fields, you know, it was faster, it was cheaper, um, and didn't have to be worked as hard as a cotton field. So slavery was one of those things that were was popular amongst certain political parties. So they wanted to keep that in, in, in check. So if you substituted all that all that work and didn't really have an excuse to really have folks work the fields in addition to all your you know all your other uh uh you know i guess evil agenda yeah. him would have replaced all that and it would have been one more argument for you to you know to emancipate folks and to, to, to really get rid of slavery you know it, it was one more reason to get rid of slavery when yeah. the country was going through so many changes so it was shunned it was hidden it was taken off and it was made illegal for and that was one I'm not a history, you know, expert, but that was one of many reasons why uh, hemp was kind of just thrown to the side. But if you know, nowadays, now that it's become legal, because hemp was also was controlled until recently. You know, Kentucky was one of the first states to really push a hemp law, and we adopted that that hemp law. So right now, California this year alone, you couldn't grow hemp last year without you know a license. Really, this is the first year that California opened up, and every state opened up, and you'll see. And hemp has no psychological effect at all. None, right? none. Really There's a threshold that you need to meet so it's it's it's, it's a 0.3 percent thc and then it's considered hemp unless it's a sativa but so there's there's some some criteria for yeah, it yeah, but yeah. there is no psychoactive effects you know you, it's not like you could, you could rip you know a, a hemp plant and smoke it you're only gonna get sick you know you're only get sick. <laughs> so you're not getting high off of that but you'll see mark my words we now that it's legal in the next few years you're gonna see how much stuff gets created with him yeah you'll see how much and it's such a a, a green you know uh, a source of of being able to build create make out of you know it's going to be incredible how hemp is going to just yeah. change joe rogan change talks about it all the time he says it's like so strong it it's is durable you use it as paper everything. It as everything you can yeah. make cars out of it certain pla things that that resemble plastic or, or stronger you know clothing i mean i mean you you just Google what can I make with hemp and yeah. you'll have pages and pages and pages of stuff. It's probably the most you diverse plant. It, it's one use. of the most diverse plants, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's amazing, man. So, how I saw on your guys' Instagram, I saw you cooking. You guys' cooking event. How did that go? How was that? That I haven't seen. I haven't seen a dispensary do that. So I don't think. Uh, Simply High Extracts. Uh, the owner of that company, his name is Daniel, real good friend of, of, of mine, right? So the idea with the cooking. Um, so we've gone from uh, uh, from. Uh, we talked a little bit how you know it, the industry's changed. The weed itself, you know, the marijuana yeah. has changed throughout the times, and people kind of look at it as a quick fix the alcoholic drinks beer to get buzzed and boom have a good day the, the, the toker smokes to get buzzed and have a good day but because of the medicinal effects of all this cooking with cannabis allows you to medicate throughout the whole day these are nano doses throughout the day but no one looks at it that way so the reason why i harp on the cooking and we why we wanted to do that event so bad is because no one really thinks that cannabis as a way to administer it throughout the whole day if you have a chronic ailment, you know, you don't want to just smoke something, forget about it, because as soon as that, that wears off, guess what? That chronic pain is still there. So why not microdose something throughout the day so that your whole entire day is pain free? So cooking was the immediate thought when I spoke to Daniel. Simply High Extracts, they do, they do CBD, THC based products, but it's olive oil, it's butters, you know. Things you can integrate in baking, in cooking, in yeah. your everyday tasks of life. You know, you don't have to be a good cook, but you could. You, people, you know, you could put it on your toast. No one says that you have to go and get a, you know, a, a degree in, in culinary yeah, arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The simple fact that you could, you know, toast your bread and put on some butter, and start your day with. A, let's just say not THC because you might have a job. You know, you might have responsibilities. But let's just say a CBD product. You you put that on your bread. You eat it with your coffee, your breakfast, and you go on your your your, your busy day. That foot pain, that back pain, that inflammation, that anxiety, gone. And you keep on introducing that into your system throughout the whole day, you know? I said that people, one time that, yeah. You know, and people think, oh, I want to get high. It's not about the high. The high is always going to be there. But cooking is one of the things we wanted to showcase. And we're going to have way more events uh, with them so that uh, people can kind of, we had, that day we only had bagels and coffee to offer sh to showcase the butter. Our next, our next iteration with them is a full-blown cook session where they're gonna come, lay out the, the menu, and really infuse 
the food so that you could t- uptake it, you know, and really medicate throughout the whole day, man. You know, when when you're infusing the food, when you're eating it, is it just? Well, I, 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 this is kind of a bad question. I think as I'm asking it, is it just like an edible? Is it take a while for it to kick in? Yeah, so to feel it? so the like, infusion, so the infusion happens. With, uh, uh, you know, you got to keep it. At, you know, he has a a, a a way to infuse product in the cooking where it becomes an edible. It, it, you, which it's not. It's actually a good question. It. We're, we're, when you when we think edibles, you, you think of gummies and brownies yeah, and stuff, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah, so you don't yeah. think of, you don't think about chicken or or fish, no. So to answer the question quickly is that when he cooks with the with the with the with the with marijuana, when he's done, it's an edible. Mm-hmm. The difference yeah. is that the, the only difference is that you could have a full plate of food. The biggest problem with edibles is that some of these edibles taste so good now, but you're limited to eating one. And if you're like me, man, I like to have a whole bag of chocolates or a whole bag of popcorn or a whole bag of yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But you can't do that because you'll be you end up in the hospital jumping out the third window, you know, <laughs> because you're so overdosed on on, on THC. Sleeping so for problem, a couple days or something. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem with this is that uh, you know you're trying to indulge into something that's very limited. So. It cooks through that, in, in like some rice or something. You got like a little bit of rice here. You get a yeah, bit of rice so spread out a little bit. Exactly. More. So you gotcha. can enjoy a full meal, and and at the same time, you're you're taking in those that you want. You know, and this is something. This is a concept that's fairly new. Well, actually, not fairly new. What it is, it has to be. It has to be you know showcased in a way where people can look at the uptake of cannabis in a way different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I finally, I, I've just started seeing like the cooking, the THC cooking shows and stuff. That's barely new in the last couple of years. Yeah, so. and they've been around, you know, we start with the brownies, you know, back in the day, the brownies, you know, and then the, the, the can of butter, you know. Yeah. I make bomb can of butter, man, strong can of butter, you know. And then it, it started just escalating. It started, you know, turning into something else. And I, I've seen it myself, you know, there's a lot of cooking shows, you know, and they cook with cannabis, you know. So, again, for the person that's, that's really looking to introduce a cannabis regimen that takes them throughout the whole day is really what that's for. You're chronic get, pain. Chronic pain. Yeah, something, that's, something that's throughout the day. And even if you have sh- you know, sharp pain throughout the day, if you're constantly uptaking microdoses, your whole body is always, not, I'm not going to say high, it's always uh, being relieved through the CBD system yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a different way of looking at cannabis because again most people that 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 smoke and stuff they're looking for that quick you know uh, buzz you know sit down it's, it's kind of weird you, you know? mentioned microdoses because even like myself i've done it with joints where i like take a hit of a joint and then i'll put it out and i like that almost more than getting all high you yeah know? okay that's exactly what it is you know people's like just because you have a, a huge you know one gram joint doesn't mean you have to smoke it all yeah you know exactly. and if you look at it, it's like Depends on what you're going to be doing that day. If, 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 you have, if you have to, you know, do some chores throughout the day, maybe don't get so baked, you know. Mm-hmm. And if you are, maybe maybe a sativa hybrid kind of deal. Or if you really just want a body high, take one hit and go on to your business, you know. You know but if you're, if, you're, if you're looking to get slammed and baked, then that's a different story. But the microdosing in this concept is, works is similar, you know. It's the idea that you don't want to get, you know, high out of your mind. And so maybe infusing it with something where it can kind of carry you through throughout the day. And more so if you're looking to relieve some kind of pain or something yeah. that's really, really, not just to get high, but you're really trying to treat something. That's a way to look at it. And again, it's fairly new in the sense that it's being now showcased up front in the retail shops, you know. And so when I talked to Daniel and his company, you know, the first thing I thought about is, hey, man, come on down. We have a, we have a, another thing is not all shops are lounges. So they don't have the ability to showcase something, you know. So. Mm-hmm. When I when I knew that I was gonna have a lounge and we were gonna get approved, the first thing I said, how do I give back to the community, showcase it? Because buying it in a package is way different than looking at it. You know, the other thing with the lounge is, you know, microdosing here is that I want to be able to give people the opportunity to try something in a very small dose, not burn a hole in their pocket. Because what happens? Yeah. You know, you smoke obviously. You know what happens? Have, have you had times where you go into a shop, you buy something for seventy five bucks, go home, and you fucking hate it? Yeah, it sucks, it's like man. the worst or thing in the world. You buy a cartridge. Yeah, and, and you're like, what is this? Like, and, you, yeah. and you wish you you had your seventy five dollars back. You know, so the lounge also gives an opportunity not to showcase stuff like that, but also an opportunity so that instead of you know dropping seventy five bucks, hey, hey man, hey partner, before you buy that, come over here, try these five, sit down, mm. relax, take one at a time. It costs you five dollars every time you 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 you, you do a dab. But I guarantee you, by the end of that last that, that, that last uh, toke, that person's gonna know exactly what they need, exactly yeah. what they like, and guess what? It didn't cost them a freaking exactly. fortune to do so. You know, a lot of people don't know it, but it's a, it's expensive to medicate, man. If you're wanting somebody that's needing this every day, you could you could fork out five hundred to thousand dollars a month, man. Yep. And that and, and that that that's a 
we're not talking about you know people that are trying to get drunk or high for the wrong reasons. We're talking about people that need Using need some medicine. relief. Yeah. So if I could do something, like I said, I see lounges around here. And like I said, this is not to throw shade on anybody, but I've yet to walk into a lounge that really cares for for, for, for their customers, man. Where they're not using the lounge to just make profit. Don't get me wrong, we're gonna throw events and stuff like that. But I go to these lounges, you know, and and, and it's they're not really being used to their full you know you know capacity. Meaning that if I could break down some of the product that I have up there that's extremely expensive and give you something, you know, at least if I can't give it to you for a cheaper price, at least let me showcase something that you're going to fall in love with, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but I don't want you to have to burn three, four, five, you know, products and, and, and have to burn through all this money just to get to something. And then you get to something and then guess what? They don't have it or they run out of it. So that's another thing we push hard on here is that I'm going to try to give you consistency and always going to try to get you the same product over and over. You know, on our website, we tell, you know, we tell, and we remind you know customers if we don't if we don't have it and you found it somewhere else tell us i will do my my best i will move mountains and earth and seas to get you what you want because if that's what provides you you know comfort and it, and it helps you out then i'm gonna try to get it for you yeah you're here you for know? the customer you're here you have to, to be man best. because again I, I i live on the idea that if you keep them happy they keep us going you know? I, and, and me being a personal user and like a customer to dispensaries all the time, that's the coolest thing when you walk into a dispensary and you see an event going on or something, you're like, oh shit, this is tight, you know, it just gives a little extra, like a little extra experience and you're just going in like, you know, you just, you're obviously you're spending money, you're going to spend money anyways, of course. but just seeing a little something on the side, a little extra, feels like you just get a little more for your money. Absolutely, you know? man. You walk in here, like I said, and it's funny because people walk in here thinking they know what they want. They're like, man, I'm, because again, hype goes a long way. How yeah. many times you see a commercial and you're like, man, I want that. And that's what you, and it, 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 that's why marketing is such a big business, man. It's like you could influence people in so many different ways, you know, and we, we, we buy with our eyes, we buy with our nose, with our mm -hmm. ear, you know? So my biggest thing is that, you know, you know, one thing I, I always get into, and this is, this is a fun fact, you know, I get it, you know, when I do tell and talk to my butt tenders, you know, I kind of get on them because they like to showcase what they know. And there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, it works for them, you know. Yeah. But I also let them, you know, I, I always tell them, turn around, look at the display. We have a whole bunch of stuff. Don't get, don't get that tunnel vision. On and the that's one what brand, happens. on the yeah. one product. So customers will come in thinking they know what they want. They're like, yeah. It's because they saw an ad. They, they, you, know, some, you know, they see a celebrity behind the thing, you know. And all yes. of a sudden, it's the hype that they're coming into. And so, it's not that we're trying to deter them from getting what they want. But at the same time, like, hey, this is what you want. But look. There's some other stuff as good for half the freaking price, man. <coughs> Just let me give you all the info yeah, before you, you choose. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're going to do what they want to do. But we try to, again... Some customers are a little bit more, more, more open to it. And some just want to come in and want to buy what they want to buy. But I'm not going to stop from trying to showcase something that might help them for cheaper. You know, or mm. there just might be a better quality product. Because even if they spend less today, does it, if they get something that they like and it's higher quality and it's cheaper, bro, they're going to come back. Absolutely. Every time. Man. Every single time, bro. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah, customer service, it goes a long way. It that's, does. That's even, even with the prices, even if the price isn't the best or whatever, just customer service does help always, man. It does. It does. You know, I tell, you know, the, the example I give people is like, you know, you might go, you know, to two Italian restaurants, you know, and one's cheaper than the other. But the one that's a little more expensive, their service, their waitresses, their waiters are just on point, you know. And you're like, man, they're a little more expensive for whatever reason. Yeah. And you you don't mind forking out a little bit more because when you're there, you're family. Yeah, you know? exactly. Opposed to here, yeah, it's a little cheaper, but, man, you feel like a number. You haven't so, seen the waiter the exactly. whole night. Yeah. And, and I will tell you, that the, the, the good part about that is that not only are we that better restaurant, but we're also the cheaper restaurant. So you get in yes. here... I'm telling you, man, it's it's double comfort feeling, you know. We 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 will treat you like family as soon as you walk in, and you'll leave most likely with the best price in the valley. Yeah, well, that's you know? what that's what made me really want to get you guys on the podcast was I was at Flat Black, having to be there when they're doing the whole paint thing, the whole uh, you know the whole paint was yeah yeah thing, yeah. And, uh, People were just super cool, you know. They're super cool, and I was like, man, I gotta try to get them on the podcast because they 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 made me feel like family. They were right there, and they just hooked me up right then and there, man. I was like. And, that, and that's no reason to, you know, yeah, no, no, no. don't know me at and all. That's, that's what it's all about. Like I said, you know, the, 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 the comparison I say is like, yeah, I can make a quick dollar today and tomorrow. I can, I can buy five G-Wags in the mansion and all this other stuff, you know, because it comes easy. And, I, and, and all I have to do is not touch my heart. You yeah. know? But guess what? 
I ain't gonna be around for a long time. No. I'm not. You know uh -huh. why? Because you're 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 being despicable by doing that. You know. So I say, you know what? I'll get my G wagon in a year from yeah. now. You know. But in that year, I've developed relationships. I've I've, be, I've I'm part of the community. And guess what? I'm still gonna make good money on it, you know. But why do I have to make the money tomorrow? When that's I the problem just... with that instant gratification, man. And yep. social media, like people are so focused on now, 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 now. When you gotta build something, you gotta absolutely, build it. you know. So I don't mind putting the time and effort into it because I know what I mean. This is this is an investment. It's not an investment in money. It's an investment in people, in community. And I know that, you know, who knows? There's no guarantee in life. I could flop tomorrow, and they. But it won't be for a lack of trying. It won't be for a lack of trying to give back and not doing it. I think I, I consider myself a very knowledgeable person in the industry. And so, if anything, you know, my whole goal is to be here, not today, not tomorrow, but for a good time. When I retire, maybe leave this to somebody else, or maybe expand, or maybe franchise, whatever. Yeah, but I'm not, yeah. I'm not thinking for tomorrow. You know, the indulgement of having a good life will come after good and honest hard work, man. And I've always been like that since I was a little kid, you know? You put in the time, you put in the effort, don't do anybody wrong, you know? And I promise you, uh, not always, but I promise you that's a recipe for you to be successful and happy in your life, man. And that's how I, I, I run this shop. I run it with hard work. I don't, again, I, you know, people say, you know, you know, crap rolls downhill. Nah, man. Customers, employees, me last. Customers get it first because they deserve it. Without them, we don't have a shop. My employees, because they put in the time, the effort, and they're knowledgeable, and they're loyal. And then last but not least, the man that gets to eat at last is this guy. Why? Because that's how it should be. Otherwise, you have a recipe for disaster, man. So if I could, if I could do that and bring it over here and it work, man, that's what it's all about, man. And I know that I will reap the benefits in long term. Yeah. And make sure the customers reap it immediately. And it's just, it's just that way, you know. You, it, you, you feed the boss last kind of deal. A lot you know? of people don't understand that. That's kind of how it is a lot of the time. The yeah. boss works day and night. Sometimes yeah. the boss doesn't get all that extra until you know, way yeah. down the road. Yeah. Until... You know, you know, it's like the entrepreneur. You know, a lot of people is like, man, I want to be an entrepreneur because I don't. I want to work a day in my life. No, yeah, no. Nah. You're, you're working seven days a week, bro. You're gonna be the hardest employee there, and if you're not, then you got it wrong, yeah. man. So, so my ideology has always been that, you know. Like I said, I didn't come here to make a quick dollar and leave, you know, and go back home, especially because I'm not, I'm not a local, you know. The idea was to come here, customers first, my employees second, boss man third. You yeah. know, and that's that's the way. You don't understand. You're not on a salary. You don't get an hourly pay. You know, <laughs> you, <laughs> you gotta you gotta fucking no, make it you work. You gotta hustle, for baby. And and like I said, and and you know, and I don't mind that. You know, you know, the whole point is that you 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 plant those seeds so that you could one day you know take advantage of that fruit. Mm, you yeah. Know? So and that's that's the ideology behind it. And if you if you lead the way that way, chances are you're gonna be fine. Now again, you have to bring experience and knowledge with it. You know, it doesn't just happen because you're a nice guy. You know, and you could be nice all day long, but you also gotta be smart and be, be you know you have to be business orientated. You know, so with that, you know, I'm a humble dude. I'm a righteous dude. But at the same time, I have a good amount of experience. You know, I don't know it all. The day I ever claim that is the day I should retire. Yeah. Every day I'm learning, man. I I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed at how fast this, I can't this industry is still pretty new you know it it's, not, it's not new but it is new you know? but it is no 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 you're absolutely right I learned like I said a lot of my learning comes from my employees you know yeah, they'll yeah. come up to me and give me ideas and the good thing about it is that in, 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 in most cases a lot of times no one wants to, you know a lot of people have an ego they don't want to hear the ideas they don't want it, not with me man I always tell them that just because I, I'm the employer doesn't mean that I know it all and I'm a, I'm a fan of people bringing me ideas because sometimes it takes new eyes. It takes people who have more experience smoking this stuff to really open up, you know, your, your way of thinking. And we've implemented so many things in the shop based on their ideas. Yeah. You know, I don't run the shop my way and only my way. Fuck that, you know. I look into my employees' eyes and they look at me. It's like, man, I can, I, I can share something with, with Jesse and not get, you know, backlashed on it or, or the fear of getting fired. Hell no, you know. And I always tell them, not all your ideas are going to be great, but... Mine aren't all good either. Yeah, you know? exactly. You know, I don't, so, I'm not Mr. Know It All either. So, so that's why when people come in here, you can feel that. You know, it's not an awkward feeling. It's not like, oh, you know, there's there's different levels of, of hierarchy here. No, I don't really put on the boss hat unless I have to, and that's my whole thing. You know, it's like your your mom and your dad is when you're growing up. It's like, don't make me take off this belt. You have yeah. to give them a reason to take off that belt. You know, so yeah, my yeah. not that I would ever hit <laughs> my employees, but the idea, <laughs> but the idea oh, is that. Man. I want to be just another person here, yeah, and if yeah. I have to put on the boss hat, it's because either I got to fix something or be, you know, being that in that in that capacity. But we re we really have the family feeling. Yeah, like here. they already know you're the boss. Yeah, you know, like I, don't to, I don't need to. I don't need to reiterate it. I don't need yeah. to tell them. I don't need to why because at the end of the day, it does. It's it, it's not even like that. You know, my whole thing is that you know, 
you know, and I will tell you from a military perspective, you know, a lot of my, my superiors, they, they ruled with the iron fist, with fear. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people think that fear uh, translates into good employees or good soldiers. No. I trained thousands of soldiers. I never did it through fear. I did try it because that's how it was taught to me. But I knew that it didn't work. So I, 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 I started doing things with respect, dignity, and treating people like freaking human beings. And, and granted, some people are just not meant to do that and they don't care. But the majority of the people that I dealt with, most of my soldiers, they do things out of loyalty and out of respect and out of fear. So the same concept I have here, bringing it into here, the same idea is that I have a team here. And my team, although, you know, the people, you know, people say you can't have family and business is so hard. No, it's not, it's not that it's literally family. It's the uh, concept of family. Yeah. And that concept is that you're going to do something for me because you love being here. You love our relationship. So I don't have to ask them. They do it out of their, the kindness of we their heart. We take care of each other. Yeah. And it's that, it's that mutual respect that we have for one another that pushes them to do, go above and beyond. You know, I might need a, 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 an employee to stay a little longer. And I've never had, you know, pushback. No problem, just I'm here. Mm. And that goes both ways, you know. I help them as much as they help me. So that relationship, although dangerous with the wrong people. See now yes. I'm not gonna claim yes, I'm not gonna claim that everybody should try that. What I'm claiming is that you gotta have the right people. You know, now if you have somebody that comes into your crew and they're there to take advantage, you can't have that treatment with them. Either A, you gotta be real strict with that person or get, or get rid of them. But in this case, I've I I've vetted them, we've hung out, we've we've done everything together to the point where I'm happy with my crew. And so I don't have anybody that thinks like that on my crew. And if they did, they wouldn't be here, you know? Mm. So I'm not saying that, that applies to every business because it's a very dangerous and fine line trying to be a family oriented kind of business when you're not family. And even in family, you know, even, even in family businesses, you have those kind of, you kind of, you know, uh, issues. Yeah, here. So, yeah. so here we're very transparent, we're open. And so I like it that way because then there is no hesitation in them performing like they want to perform. They don't have to worry about me lingering over the back of their, you know, uh, micromanaging you know, you know, and all that. And I don't do that, you know, don't get me wrong. I do have responsibilities because without my decisions, without me being stern and doing certain things, we don't eat, you know, we wouldn't be a successful business. But at the same time, and, and I could be wrong, you know, but I, I challenge you to interview any of my employees <laughs> and <laughs> let me know what, what they tell say. you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it's one of those things where I don't have any fear of them ever thinking, oh, you know, I'm one sided. No, I come into work and it's like, hey, how you doing? And just see Alex on first name basis. And there is no there is no clicks. There is no department kind of feeling. We're all here for the same reasons. And, the, and that reason is to give the customer the best experience possible. And to educate them, you know. And if we make money in the in the process, then they so be it, man. Let's yeah, do we all it, like you know? money. You Absolutely. Can't really hit on that. No, yeah. you cannot. You know. Yeah. What What events you guys got coming up? You guys got any any or uh, so you know whatever cooking or anything like that? So any? we have so we have a whole bunch of different events happening. So. Um, because of COVID-19, we have to follow the regulations. We have to wait until they tell us you guys are full-blown a lounge and you could operate as such, as, yeah. as, as, as a lounge, you know. But the events that we have, so we've been filling up our calendar and, and using this space. Uh, and where, as, where where can they uh, find your calendar? What's your website? So or what's our, your Instagram? Our, our website is www.heightened.us. Heightened, okay. let me tell you how you spell heightened because, you know, it's one of those, you know, uh, words that you may not get right the first time. Yeah. It's just H-I-G-H-T-E-N-D. So www.heighten.us. That's our website. On the website, you hit the event calendar uh, uh, button, and it'll take you to our calendar. And our calendar is loaded up with. Right now, it's 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 heavy on PADs. You know, patient appreciation dates. Uh-huh. The reason for that is because it's in lieu of being able to open this lounge. It's still a way to educate and, and give a little bit different of a dynamics in, in the retail shop, using the space you know uh, to our advantage. So we are able to educate folks on different brands. So our PADs run back. It, it, it's based on brand uh, uh, availability. So every brand will give us promo product. And so on that day, on one given day, we might run three different brand promos, and they come into blocks different times. Yeah. Uh, so gotcha, gotcha. if you jump on our calendar, you'll see every every event on there. All you got to do is click on it, and it'll give you the details on it, you know. Um, the other thing is is our Instagram. Um, you know, we, you can follow us on our Instagram, and we, we will update you on what's coming up and what's really the promo, you know, what promos are we giving. And that's going to be uh, at, at Heighten Palm Springs, oh, um, gotcha. and that's our handle for, for our Instagram. Um, so the other thing that we're coming up with is uh, we're, we're launching curbside uh, and online ordering this Monday. 
You know, we have to oh, go this Monday. This so it Monday. Just started. Oh, oh yeah, it's gonna you. just start. We we've we've held off on delivery for just a little bit only because we have to work through some systems. But curbside and online ordering will be available this Monday, man. So that will be bring another type of uh, of, of service to, to the community because a lot of times you know you're you're wanting to order something, not be spend too much time in store. You know what you want, and then just the the the, the the practicality of being being able to do that, coming in and just having your stuff taken out to your car and get the kick out of here, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. something that we're hoping that, that increases revenue for us, you know, and also gives our, our customers a different way of uh, purchasing their Just another their option. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. And as far as events, we do have a whole bunch of events. Once the lounge is open and ready to go, man, we have anything from movie night, trivia night, you know, we have uh, um, live music. We always try to stay local because that's who we want. We really want to uh, uh, give back. If you have more podcasts, man, like I could put you in touch with our event, man, or, or we have a, uh, my manager, Michael, who is the event manager, can give you a, a whole list of things that we have planned, you know. So as far as events, we're limited because of COVID-19. 19, but but that has not stopped us from planning months yeah. and months and months of events you know we're just really just at the starting line you know we're waiting for that gun to go off because once once we're allowed to do that then you'll see that this lounge and i'm again sometimes some things come off as i'm trying to shade other companies but i'm not the idea is that i don't, I don't feel like you have it all i try to say what made you better and you're like i, I can't really say what made you better really so the idea is that i've gone to so many lounges you know up the coast you know and the idea is to really use the lounge to you know you know, it's like going to you know getting you know VIP bottle service uh, at a at a at a at a club, and getting there and then you know sleeping instead of partying. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we have a lounge and you come I here. What you're saying, you know, what you're you don't want a guy sitting on your couch for four eight hours, you know, smoking and just being there. He's like, no, you can do that in your basement, man. You don't have to come here to do that. You know, so if you're here, why don't use the lounge so that it's interactive? You know, it's fun. And make it so that we can plan events. You know, we can you know bring in a local banding. You yeah. know, for I can understand. I've seen know? so many places, and not even just in the valley, but even you know out of the valley, set up lounges, and there's nothing going on. In them. No, you know, man, it's like not a damn thing. You, you have the guy that looks like he hasn't moved there for three days. You know, and he's smoking. <laughs> he's smoking the same doobie for three days, and you're like, hey, man, that's cool and fine. But but you have all this space. You know, we have this dab bar that we that we installed here. This dab bar is amazing, man. So going back to our concept, you know, if I could provide people micro doses just of something that you know that, that they could try and by the end of their stay here in the lounge they know exactly what they want they know exactly what they're going to pay for it and at the same time we might be throwing something where we're doing cocktails you know we work with a whole bunch of companies that are beverages you know or syrups you yeah. know so dude we can't have alcohol i think eventually that's going to change but for right now for in THC lieu of that drink or something you could make a cocktail with thc syrup with thc you know uh sodas uh mm, and, and, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. you can mix cocktails you know once we're able Open, open the lounge you know you could smoke you know you could you could burn through a couple pre-rolls before you decide on something big and you know we could do you know mini pre-rolls you know you could do mini dabs you know so you're already introducing the different dynamics you know if you have the lounge let it not just be somewhere where someone can come and just smoke a doobie no let them at least try a sh showcase them the product you know yeah man and then you t on top of that you throw events you know how many bars you go to and they have a trivia night you know hey, those are fun events man yeah, so if yeah, you could be yeah. sitting here you don't have to you don't have to you know you know participate but it provides you that opportunity to just not just sit there you know, so uh, not to mention if we have a live band that's local, you know, why not bring them in, you know, and we could block off four hours of the day where people can sit down, smoke a joint, hit the dab uh, uh, rig and just zone out while listening to a bitching band that's local, yes, you know, so yeah. we try to keep it all in house, all community love. Especially you know, in the Coachella Valley, man, I feel like there's not too many options. I feel exactly. like the yep. options are just like bars or like going to the club or something. And like, yeah, yeah. You know, like why not mix it up and add some other stuff? Why not, man? Yeah. Like I said, that, that's the whole thing is, you know, people limit themselves to the traditional ideas of, of, of a lounge, of a retail shop. Bottom line, this industry is so new that you have you have a blank canvas to do what you want so as long as you stay within the regulations and legalities of it but outside of that i hate this you know this you know these these cookie cutting uh uh measures that retail shops have to abide by you know oh no well you know you go from the trap shop days to now and everything's so the same no man yeah. I'm, I'm trying i didn't come here to open up another retail shop you know and You're i be different. To say, no i not, not only yeah oh yeah i came here to be different but also to be uh uh the example man you know it's like we're doing it different you know mm -hmm. you know i'm not saying the other shops are not doing it right what i'm saying is that i didn't come here to be just like them yeah That's be the your own point. way you have make to it where be. people are like oh shit this guy went his whole he went the path less taken yeah, absolutely and it starts with 
people coming in here and you could feel the vibe. You know, I don't know how many shops you've been into, but I'm assuming you've been to some shops. You walk in there, and man, you you, you regret walking into that yeah, place. Yeah. And you're like, man, maybe I should, you know. But now you're in there, so you now you're now you're pressured to go like buy you something. Get something. Yeah, <laughs> because man, you're like, man, what is worst. this guy doing in here? You know. So, and I'm not saying, like I said, I've been to a couple of shops down here, and there's some shops that are doing it just right, and there's some that are, you know, that 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 should that should that should be ashamed of what they're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. I said, not to throw names out there or anything, I would never do that. But the bottom line is that if I could have the platform and this is the one, and this is going back to why, why I like doing these kind of things is because I don't hold my tongue for nobody. I'm not, I'm also, I'm also not going to put your business out there, but I will hold a finger in a stern way and say, if you're doing it wrong, fix it and do yeah. it right. And I'd like to give a high five to those that are doing it right, you know? And I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I can tell you what, everything I do here comes from a good place. It comes You're from a good idea. You're trying to do it the right way. You have to, man. You know? yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and like you said, you know, the people, the people that aren't doing it right and the people that are know, know who they are. You know? They know. The people that, that are running them. Absolutely. They know who they are. You know, it's like, you know, walk, you know, it's, you know I, I tell people all the time, he's like, if you don't have a mirror, I'll get you one, you know, and I have not, it has nothing to do with the literal concept of a yeah. mirror. The bottom line is that people forget to, t you know, to look at themselves in the mirror before they walk out. It's not door. everybody else's you know? fault. Yeah. Where you're you know? at, you know, and so, so like I said, if the shoe fits kind of, you know, put it on my friend, you know, and if it doesn't yeah. apply to you, don't worry about it. You know, you should just roll off your back kind of deal, you know, but a lot of these guys, like I said, we open these shops up and a lot of us come from the 215 days. Some of us are even deep rooted into the criminal fucking realm you know but the idea is that you know it, it, if you're doing it now and you've gone through all this process of pain for licensing and permits and stuff like why not just go a little further and run it like a business that is proud to run it like a business and you're proud to have customers because that's what it, we're, yeah. we're customer based so if you can't give props to your customers the people that are holding your business up you know then what, man what's what wrong caused you to not cut any corners was it being in the military was it well, just you <laughs> growing up because i feel like well, you're just like you're like well, I, I gotta book, give everybody I, everything you know? i'm by like, the book and 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 you could even say that i'm a little too generous with with certain things but i tell you what i think a lot has to do with combat you know, you spend you spend a lot of time in combat. You got two ways to go. Usually, there's a lot of ways to go. But when you come back from combat, there's two ways usually that most soldiers go. One is that paranoia, that adrenaline junkie. Their life kind of just just kind of falls apart. You know, you're relying on drugs or if, or or something to keep your mind from that, from going back yeah, to the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. And then you got a smaller portion of us come back with a different flavor in life of the appreciation of just being able to breathe for one more second. So now you value everything differently. So the reason why people, you know, I'm a, I tell people I'm a sledgehammer when you meet me because I'm honest and I'm to the point and I'm passionate, but it's not because I'm aggressive or because I have an ego. I don't have an ego. It's, it's far from the opposite. What happens is that I value life so much and I spent so many months in combat where, where the fear of death was so, so prevalent and strong where you didn't know if you were going to wake up the next day. So when you got back and now I'm at a, now I'm at a place where I think I'm safe, although anything can happen today, I always told myself, I'm not going to waste one second being fake. I have no regrets. No regrets. No and yeah. I'm not going to waste one second doing somebody wrong. Because I've met, the, I've met, I've met the, the worst in people, you know, and I've seen the worst in people. So when I got back from, when I got out of the military, one thing, one thing that stayed, you know, truly, you know, with me was, you know, living, given the opportunity to live, to live another day should be a day that you make the best out of. And you can only be the best, you can only make a day the best day if you're being righteous, if you're being straightforward and honest, you know. I can't talk to somebody and give them one second of a, of a lie or, or give them a second of who, or of somebody else. So, yeah, I'm, a, I'm like a sledgehammer when I you I feel like me, for you know? people like, like you, you know, like, it's hard for people to be like you because you've lived through that stuff. You know, a lot of yep. people haven't gone through any sort of problems or anything, or like, you know, gone through war or any sort of battle or... They haven't had any real issues, so they don't Correct. even really, they don't even really, like, I, I don't know. They just don't know how to, like, deal with any, anything. And, no, no. And, you know, I don't even know how to, I, how to I always say you people take, Yeah, I always say people take life for granted. You yes, know? yeah. And until you're put into a situation, you know, it's like one of those things, like, you know, if someone gives you something every day and at the same time the same thing, you count for it for the next day. Let yeah. that be the day that you don't get that. And then you have to, you have to fend for yourself. That's the day you're going to appreciate every single day that you were given something for the sake of giving it to you. Yeah. So the way I look at it is that I survived combat, I come back, and a lot of people have that, that placebo effect where, oh, six months later, nothing's happening. I'll give you the prime example. You ride a motorcycle, you know? You don't wear a helmet, you know? Uh, the day you crash and you slide and you survive it, you tell yourself, I'm gonna wear a helmet every day. 
And then you got two people. You got the placebo effect where the people goes back and six months later, they wear a helmet for six months, but then they take it off because they go back to their old ways, you know? Yeah. And then you got that guy that never changes. He wears a helmet for the rest of his life. I'm that guy. I got out of combat. I appreciate life. And not just for a little bit. I didn't go back to being the person that I was. Not that I was a bad person, yeah. but now I, I set a tone for living the rest of my life. And you that, keep that like life yep, and death in your head. And yeah. I keep it that way, you know? And so that pushes me to be the best person that I can be. I'm not saying I'm perfect. And I get, like I said, um, but I can tell you this much. You'll never get a lie. You'll never get backstabbed. You'll never get deceived by me because I don't think that's worth even, even doing. Why? Because, again, I, I love interacting with people because I appreciate life so much that if I get a second and anybody gives me a second of their time, I'm going to make sure that that second's worth something, you know? So going back to why um, uh, I'm by the book is because why wouldn't you be? You yeah. know? It's yeah. like, can I, can, I, can I squeeze another dollar out of a customer? Absolutely I can. But why would you? You know, um, if, if, if the idea goes back to, you know, how are you when people aren't looking, how are you when people aren't like looking at you, you know well, what that's I'm saying? The, that's you know, the main that thing, was a, right? You know, that was a saying in the military is like, do perform your job as if though your superior was there looking at you. Why not live life like that? You know, why do you have to be a different person when eyes are not on you or when you think, you know, I tell you one thing, I tell people, you're, you're alone with your conscience at one point or another throughout the day, yep. you know, yeah, exactly. and you can fool anybody else, but you can't fool yourself unless you're a psychopath, you know, <laughs> but you're, psycho, yeah. you're with your conscience at the end of the day and going back to the mirror concept, you know, I wake up, look in the mirror, not literally figuratively. And I know that I'm going to leave my house and do the best that I can for everybody, myself and anybody that I have any interaction with, you know, whether it be a guy that I just met off the street or my employees or someone, a loved one, a family member, you know. And when I come back to my house, I sit down and reflect and my conscience tells me whether or not I have it. But you know when you did something great and yeah. when you did something, you know, and you, like I said, we didn't do shit for the exactly, day. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to put on a Superman cape and go save the world. But I tell you what. Just by being a guy that doesn't take away from society, you're giving back. And even if you don't give back, let's just say you balance out at the end, you know, you balance out at the end of the day. You didn't give, you didn't take. That's good enough for me. I'm not saying you got to go out there and change the world, you know. But I can tell you this much: don't take from, don't take from, from the world, don't take from other people. And so here, when I run the shop, I'm just gonna make ends meet because it's a business. But outside of that, if I could give it, I'm gonna give it. You know, and that's the concept that we ran here and it's paid dividends. You know why? Because customers feel that, you know, I wish I could do something about the taxes because that's the biggest thing that, you know, people complain about, but I can't control that, you know? Yeah. So in, in lieu of that, I try my best to give back because again, I'm still going to live a good life, you know, but again, do I really need three mansions and six cars? I don't, I don't, yeah. you know, yeah. so, um, money to me has never been that kind of thing for me. So it doesn't really drive who I am. You know, it's nice to make money, but I'm not, I don't, I don't live for it, you know? So it just happens to be that. It seems like you're living life just to live life. Yeah, man. bro. And, and, and the best life you can, you know, you, you try to live the best life that you can because you only get one. Kind yeah, of deal, you know? yeah, so, yeah. and that's the concept with this, you know, is that I come here every day and with the idea that I want to have a good day, not just for me, but for everybody else. And if I could do that and spread that across the fucking nation, then, then, then so be it, you know. So that's the way, you know. So going back to your question, I think wars, wars, you know, in Some in a weird, morbid death. way, has made me a better person, man. Yeah, you know, well, I, I, I've. I think you're not the only person, you know, yep. like you said, there is obviously some, a group of people that they come back and they are better yep. or like, you know, life and death situations, car crashes, yep. you know, anything, There's like any of those big situations, divorce, even that stuff, you yeah, know, absolutely, like relationships, man. Absolutely. Like all that stuff. I think people need, need to, uh, instead of like dealing with those big things and, and quitting on life and feeling victimized and feeling like bad for themselves, they need to kind of like. All right, I, I handled it. Now let's go make a difference. You Absolutely, know? you know, and continue to make a difference. Yes. Don't go back. If you weren't a good person to begin with, there's nothing wrong with that. But if if it took if it took trauma or something so significant, you know, I have a saying. You know, I say, you know, people need to see. And I'm not saying I'm not saying literally see. It stands for significant emotional event. Yes. When you have a significant emotional event for the first time in your life, you'll be able to see. Yeah. And that's I tell people that because that stuck with me for many years, you know. I didn't understand the concept of the word see. I said, see what? No, you don't get it. Significant emotional event. My battlefield time was an emotional event and it allowed me to see life differently. And if you don't see life differently after that or any trauma you've gone through, it's shame on you because you can't fix something that you had no clue about. But when you when you're given that clue and you don't take advantage shit, or ignore man. it, then shame on you, you know? So yeah. if the helmet off your, if the helmet on your head doesn't tell you that you could survive a, a crash in, or potentially survive it and you have better chances of it and you take it off, shame on you. 
after you, you know, already see, got that one opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, one in, absolutely. You know? So if that's not enough to change your your perspective on life, then shame on you, man. I, like I said, so I've never gone back to who the person I, who I, who who who, 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 I, who I was, but I wasn't a bad guy. But I could have been done. I could have been doing a lot more things for people, mm-hmm. and now that's now that's the person that I am. So if you if you if, you know if you go back in my little history that I've had since I've gotten back from the military, you know I've dedicated my entire life in helping people. Not in a big way, you know. I'm not a, a huge millionaire, or I don't have you know you know things oh, to yeah, give I'm away. Not a millionaires but, are helping a lot you know, of people. You know what I'm saying? So, but, yeah. but, the, but the bottom line is that if there was a if, if there was time, if there was something that I could do for somebody else for 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 whatever reason, I did it, man. You know, and that's just pay it forward kind of deal. From your little know? time in the Valley, yeah, it seems like you're giving back already. You know, yeah. you're already connecting with all these these businesses and even local artists. I saw you connect with my buddy Andrew Gonzalez. Uh, I don't know. He's a he's a produ- he's I think he's a producer, a, a singer, guitar. He's all kinds of things. But you guys are just always connecting. I, we, yep. I appreciate it, man. No, and, and we're just starting, you know. We had a little rough start at the beginning. <laughs> But the idea was to, you know, be, to be settled in. And once we're settled in is to really start focusing and really prioritizing our, our, our time here. You know, yeah. initially it's always to set up, get business rolling, get money in, you know, in, in, into the business, you know. And that's always priority because outside of that priority, you wouldn't be able to live another day. But once we're settled, and this is why I'm looking uh, to, you know, I'm looking forward to everything that's coming, you know. Um, the idea is that once we're settled and we have time, because time is one of those things that is just hard. I mean, it's a commodity you can't get back. So once we're settled, we have that time, it's going to get pumped back into the community, you know? Yeah. So I'm looking forward to these connections and the ability to kind of, you know, be part of something much bigger, you know? And it starts with, you know, being here. And, and you have to be open to it. Otherwise, like I said, you know, come here and do what? You know, is to make money and leave? No, that's not the idea, you know? You don't go into somebody's house you know, grab a beer out of their fridge and take off. No, you better say hi, sit down. How you hang doing? out a while? You know, even if you don't like it, common yeah. courtesy tells you. Hey, before you drink a beer, man, you you, can, you you at least have to say hi to the guy. You know, so I came here not with the idea of or business oriented to make money and leave. No, I came here to be part of. Like I said, I'm grabbing that beer. Don't get me wrong, because I'm thirsty and I want it. Mm-hmm. But in that transition, in that in that little transaction, I'm gonna make sure that I pay my my respects and I I give that homeowner the community that time and effort because at the end of the day I am drinking that beer yeah. and it's not mine to begin with it's 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 the it's it's, it's the community you know? you, so help you out. if you have that mentality as a business owner especially when you're out of town when you're not you're not a local you know that's the least you could do you know and you only hope that the community embraces you as one of their own and if 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 they don't there's nothing wrong with that but at least you keep a cordial respectful relationship to the point where you provide some some uh, benefit to them and they provide you but it hasn't been like that it's been the opposite i i when we got here i'm i feel more embraced than i did in some of the oc shops that we open or use why because it's a, it's a different type of again yeah. going, going back to the question why the valley that's why it's yeah. because you could feel a on a more personal level um it, business is a business anywhere but here on top of the just the business part of it you feel like you're part of something bigger. I feel like, too, everyone's somehow connected here in the Valley. You know, like it's, it's more of one big family than, like, the OC or, or you yep. know, Los Angeles or whatever. It's just so many people, and there's yeah. so many different cities. Everybody's kind of spread out. Yeah, and you get lost in the sea of things, you know. And here, like I said, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's – and not only that, but, 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 the, but the city of Palm Springs and everything around – all these cities are growing, you know. And to be able to be part of that growth, you know, to, able, to be able to say, I got a business in Palm Springs. I'm part of the community you know and as you know you know it's like you know I was there at this time and you see it because everything's growing so fast that you know it's nice to to know that you were part of maybe not the pioneer days but you're part of part of that growth and not only that but you also contributed to that growth because you were part of the community and you could attribute your hard work to something and that really makes a big difference in how we we decide or our train of thought is coming here and doing something different and that's everything we just talked about. Yes. To, to really answer the final question, the, the, the one, what makes us different? Everything I just told you makes us different. Yeah, you know? all that There's shit, not man. one thing. It's, it's a slew of things. It's a, it's a combination of things that makes us really different. You know? And I hope that kind of you know, uh, really translates and really can showcase itself in time. 
You know, like anything else, things take time. Nothing happens overnight, and I don't expect to be uh, uh, looked at or, or things that, you know, change overnight. But I expect it to change with time and that we can really showcase who we are. And, again, you know, people might hear, you know, they're going to hear this podcast, and they can only go based off what I'm saying. But, but it's not, it doesn't stop there. Come on to the shop. Check us out. Actions speak louder than words, my friend. And I can tell you what, I can speak all day, and I could have taken a class in college, and I can be bullshitting you all day long yeah but i don't rely on my words to convince you i rely on my actions well you have it here and man it's absolutely like, come, come here and check it you I, yeah i have proof here come, absolutely come check you know? it out you and already I, have thrown the like you know the 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 cooking event and i've seen you guys already have other events coming yep. up so it's not like you guys aren't ingrained into, into the community so you guys are, are putting your words into action absolutely man and that's yeah. what it's all about you know don't 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 show me you know, t- you know i mean don't tell me show me that what you, you can do kind of deal you yeah. know so and i'm all about that you know like i said i'm not a, i'm a i'm a face-to-face kind of guy i've always been you know whether it be bad good or ugly it doesn't really matter i've always been a, that kind of person so that same attitude i have coming here is that I'm going to put up this building. I'm going to hire these people. We're going to sell weed, but we're as transparent as they come. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to, just the same way we did that, we're also going to open the doors for you to freely come in and ask the questions, you know. I don't get bothered when people come and try to put something on us or, or they try to compare us. I don't. Why? Because if they're better, then I'm going to give them credit for it. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't take it as a personal thing. I take it as a learning experience. You know, if someone's doing something better than me, I want to learn. And guess what? I'm the kind of guy that not only learns, but I'm going to approve upon that. You know, call it copying and making it better. Hey, if you want us to call it that, whatever you want to, yeah. if someone else, what are we doing, doing though? It's business, right? <laughs> yes. That's all we're doing. You know? And I also invite other shops, to, you know, like I said, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's good competition. There's bad competition. You know, there's so many shops in Palm Springs. And the only thing I really say about other shops is that I hope, I hope they're doing it right. And I hope that they have, like me, I go into their shops, and I don't go there as an other owner. I go there, I go there as, a, as, a, as a customer, you know. And if I happen to meet the owner, you know, it's a, it's a cordial, very respectful thing because it's not about, you know, who's better. It's about all of us being better, Yeah. you know. And like I said, it's a friendly competition, of course. I want their business, you know. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, it's not, it's, 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 you know, if, if I do get their business, it's not because, I'm, you know, it's not, it's not in a, you know, with, with malice or in a malicious way, you know. But my whole thing as a, as a business owner is that do I like to have competition? No. But if I'm going to have competition, let it be a righteous, another righteous, yeah. another guy like me. And, and honestly, too, like it. Is it really that tight in the valley where you both can't prosper, you both can't do well? You know what I'm saying? No, like, and that's the thing is the, 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 we can. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The only time you can't do that is when somebody has a hidden, a evil agenda, you know? Exactly. Where, where they're not even focusing on, on, on making money. They're focusing how to shut you down. You know, now they're... Take now, every single person, yeah, and every the, customer. The, and in that kind of environment, no one can thrive, you know? No one can, you know? But there's a lot of shops around here that are doing it. They're just doing it right, you know? And like I said, you know, not to shit on anybody else's but there's a shop that are not doing it right you know so like i said are we the, are we the example to follow i like to believe so you know i like to, you know why because i feel it in my heart and i feel it in my mind you know it'd be different if i was talking to you with a, you know with, with 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 a you know with a fake face but in my heart if you ask me jesse who's the best shop in the valley heighten yeah not because i own the place but truly true i do i believe that in my heart you know well, you're you, you, I asked you guys to be on the podcast, and instead you guys are like, just come on to the shop and have the Absol- podcast here. And I was Absolutely, like, man. That's different. You know, no. uh, that's pretty transparent for a dispensary. It is, you know, you know, and, know what I'm and, you know, in most cases, like I said, I would have probably, you know, you know, I, you know, we didn't even run a QOA or anything like that. You know why? Because I think, I, well, I, I will tell you this, you know, sometimes I do have to be prepped because I'm a, I'm a sailor when it comes to cuss words, man. Mm-hmm. So, so I think you got two out of me today. So that's a, that's a record. Yes. Anybody listening to this and whoever knows me, they should go buy a lottery ticket right oh, now. Man, my podcast a, gets it's wild. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a rare occasion for me to like every other word is something you know because I'm just I'm just a potty mouth like that. But I'm gonna tell you you know Jonathan uh, he set this up for me you know and I, it's a testament who I am because he's the kind of guy that would prep me and he's very good at you know public speaking. So he would have said something if he thought that I was out of hand. But I can tell you what right now is uh, the fact that he didn't give me any key, any questions or answers uh, goes to show me that he trusts. And yeah. he's okay with me speaking, you know, <laughs> speaking openly <laughs> to you, you know, uh, because otherwise he would have prepped me, you know. And like I said, uh, he, he he does this more often than I do. I, I'm just a, I'm just a guy that speaks the truth, yeah. and I'm a guy that speaks from the heart. And if that means that I need to be kind of kind of tamed, then so be it. 
But I can tell you one thing. When you walked in here today and we did this, I, I have no, there was no, I'm not nervous whatsoever. I'm kind of awkward. It's kind of weird because I've never done this before. But as far as being nervous, no. Because if there's one thing, is I've lost the fear of speaking to people many years ago. And then why? Because when you have to memorize or be somebody else, then you tend to sweat. Yeah. And you yeah. tend to think over things. Stuff. When you talk to me, I just, you know, I mean, I sound as articulate That's as kind I That's kind of crazy, though, because I, I, <laughs> This has gone over an hour already, and I didn't. I've never spoken to you in my life, so this is this is why I enjoyed doing the podcast, man. There's a lot of people that you have in common with that you don't even know, or a lot yeah. of people that you can have a full on hour conversation. And a lot of people nowadays don't talk at all. No, and and, and, and that's one thing. I'm, well, I don't have that problem. You know, I'm the kind of guy. Who, <laughs> yeah, I, I will yeah, melt yeah. your ears off, man, if you give me opportunity. And the reason why is because again, yeah, I love. I have a saying: I hate people, but I love good people. Mm. I, I don't like people that waste my time or have a, have a have no 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 value to life. You know they have no appreciation of life. But the people that do, I drive so well with them, man. That I that we could talk into the wee hours and we would have to pick it up again. You know, yeah. and if I don't see you for a while, I guarantee you when I see you again, we'll pick up exactly where we left off. Why? Because we we there's something that you share with another person. You know, and if you got if you're surrounding yourself with good people, man, you know you could you could talk all day long. You know, yeah, and I, right. like I said, you said it was an hour. I, to me, it's been like 10 minutes. That's what man. it feels like, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of this podcast, man. I appreciate you uh, coming on. I appreciate you guys deciding to Absolutely, be on the 100 man. podcast. Hey, hey, brother, like I said, just send me a yeah, copy. And you keep it 100, hey. too. You keep it 100. <laughs> just send me a copy to see how, how terrible I sound on it, you know? <laughs> but, oh, man. No, you but sound it was, great. It was a pleasure meeting you, brother. Like I said, I appreciate on. you coming down here. And, uh, and, Episode and 63, Jesse. Thank you, guys. Thanks, bro. Thank you.